In this video, I'm going to show you how to color match your art prints so that they match your painting. And if you can see around Mr. Samadhi's head, I am using my Epson P800 printer back there. So let's get started. I have a Nikon DSLR that I use to photograph my artwork and I photograph them in raw format. I start by opening my image in Photoshop. Now this pulls up the camera raw menu um, that has, mine says camera raw 15.0. This is with Adobe Photoshop 2023, which is what I'm using right now, but it should be similar in most other versions of Photoshop. Now what I do first is I crop it out and you can see I tried to square up the image as much as I could when I was taking the photo, but it's not exactly perfect. It's pretty close, so I'm just going to go with this. Next, what I do is I go over here to this little eyedropper next to the white balance. It's the white balance tool. You want to select part of your image that is supposed to be very white. I do want to show you something. If you notice, if you select a part that's not quite as white, it's going to change the way the colors look a little bit. And I actually like the way that looks better. It looks more like my original painting. Um, it's a little bit warmer. So you can see here, it's a little bit cooler, a little bit warmer, and then the colors are getting even more warm as I go into some of these areas. And you can see these are kind of making it, it's not looking good because I'm clicking on areas that aren't white, just to show you what the camera raw filter really can do. Next, what I do is just select open down here and it will open it up in Photoshop. Next up is to print out a test print. You can see I printed off just a small little square there, not the whole paper because I'm going to stick the same sheet of paper in there again a few more times so that I can keep using it and not waste supplies. You can also see just right off the bat, it looks really dark. It is too dark. What I need to do is go in here and do some more editing before I continue to print. In order to lighten this up, what I like to do is go over here to the adjustments and exposure. Just kick up the exposure some. And then if you want to, you can also adjust the gamma. And with my printer though, it's better not to make it too dark because the darks always end up looking more dark than they actually are. And so if anything, I make it a little bit lighter for what I see on the computer screen. So you can see this looks quite a bit brighter. So I think we're gonna start there. Time to print it out again. And as you work with your printer, you'll get to know that as well. If there's a little bit of mismatch between what the screen looks like and what the printer will print out. Now there are some different software and ways that you can try to configure your screen to match what comes out of your printer. Uh, but honestly, it's never exactly perfect. And the best way to go about it anyway is just to keep printing test ones and then compare them to the painting, which we're gonna do here in just a second. Now you can see that this next one, this is the newest print we did the one on that side. It's a little bit lighter, but I think we need to go a little bit lighter still. Back to the exposure again. I'm going to kick it up a little bit more. Right. Have my other print. This one is looking quite a lot better. I think that's a about the right exposure. Next step is to go over to my painting and look at this little image side by side with it and see how the colors are matching because you can look at this and say, oh, that's looking pretty good. But if you don't match it to your actual colors on your painting, then it's not gonna work because you can't remember in your mind what exactly the colors look like. I mean, it might have a general resemblance, obviously, but if you wanna get an exact match, you have to hold it up there right next to it. Now the colors look pretty good. The blue here is still a little bit darker on the print than it is in the painting. And same thing with the green. Overall, everything's still a little bit too dark. The blacks are definitely a little bit darker than what they are on my painting. And like I said, always, whenever I print these out, the blacks on my printer is just, even though they look good on the screen, it's always a little bit too dark. The yellows, everything looks just a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna lighten this up a little bit more and then print a larger one. I'm gonna go ahead and lighten it up just a little bit more. Not too much, but a little bit. And then I'm going to lower the amount of black, or lighten the black a little bit, I guess I should say. You go into selective color. If you go to blacks, you can bring it down some. 
Now, if you bring it down a lot, you can see how it really fades it out. So you don't want to do that, but a little bit. And if uh, I'd like to do small steps on things. So if this doesn't bring it down enough, I could bring it down a little bit more. Now I'm going to print another one. This time I'm going to actually print it the size that I want it to be normally when I'm selling prints. So I'm just going to be set at the eight by 10 size. Are you a billy goat? <laughs> what are you doing up there? <laughs> it looks really good. The colors are a fairly close match everywhere. The only color that isn't quite right is the pink. And I've painted this pink with fluorescent colors, so it's never going to be quite right. It's, the printer will not print in fluorescence, but I am going to touch that up just a little bit to try to make it look a little bit closer. In order to adjust the pink, I'm going to go into the hue and saturation. And I love this feature because you can change the hue and saturation of the entire piece, right? See, wow. <laughs> but we don't want to do that. We just want to change the saturation of the pinks. And now the magenta is not exactly what it is. We can use this eyedropper and it will zero in on the exact color. So it's calling it reds too. So we're just going to up the saturation a little bit of that. Now you can see I'm trying to up the saturation and it's not really changing this color here, although it says it's supposed to. This is one of the things that I've encountered. I'm going to cancel out of that. This is one of the things that I've encountered with the pink color when I use the fluorescence. There's just something about it that, I don't know, the printer doesn't like, Photoshop doesn't like, <laughs> and you may come across that in your work. But typically, if you use either the selective color or the hue and saturation, and you pick the exact colors on there, you can adjust individual colors that way. For me, since it's really hard to get it exactly perfect, what I'm going to do is the replace color. And you can see I have this there. I just click on the eyedropper on where I want it to go. You can adjust the fuzziness of it. I think it's good about like this. Now, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. But I think the main thing is you don't want it to look too digitally altered. You want it to look as close to the original as possible. So now I'm going to go back and see. This is what it looked like before. And if I do that, it's quite a change. But what I can do is, see this isn't without it, that's with it all the way. I can kind of fade it on here to where it's a little bit in the middle. All right. And then I want to go ahead and brighten up the exposure just a tad bit more going in smaller increments of brightening it. And I'm also going to go and increase the saturation just a little bit of the entire piece. So my work is really bright and I've noticed that if I do that with the prints, it makes them just have a little extra pop. As you can see, this process is a lot of printing and comparing and then printing out another one and comparing. And so that's what we're doing here. And this is the last time I'm going to do it because I think this print is looking pretty good. It is a very close likeness to the original. It, you're never going to get a print to be exactly like the original. And that's why the originals are worth more money than the prints are, obviously. Uh, but I like to get them as close as I can. And I am happy with how this one turned out. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you would like more information on making art prints, I have a whole playlist. I've linked it below and I'm also putting it on here as an in screen. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.